This tropical wave you see right here is something that we're going to definitely need to closely monitor over the next several days because we do have some of the ensemble members from both the GFS and the European model wanting to develop this into a tropical cyclone beyond the next seven days. And take a look at the overall composition of this tropical wave. We do see that there's plenty of convective activity surrounding it, although this isn't enough for this to have at least any chance in the near future of developing into a tropical cyclone, it is enough at least to pr potentially prepare this storm once it approaches a more favorable environment for this to develop into a tropical cyclone in the more long term future. And um, in terms of the wind shear, we do we do have a decent amount of strong upper level winds on the southern side of this storm system, which is keeping the storm a little bit disorganized. Definitely not. It doesn't really have a closed and well defined center of circulation just yet. However, that could change, like I said, in the more long term future. And it's under a fairly moist environment for the time being. So we should see this convective activity continue surrounding um, this tropical wave. So first, take a look at the GFS's latest run um, when it comes to relative humidity. We do see that the GFS model is taking a very aggressive approach with this storm system where we do see this storm system develop fairly quickly relative to the European model and relative to most of the other computer models. However, I do believe that this is another one of those two aggressive initializations that the GFS model has produced where it wants to develop up nearly a tropical storm as early as Saturday. However, I don't believe this will be the case because there's going to be plenty of dry air right over this storm system, just uh, north of it especially. And there's a strong ridge right here that's bringing somewhat of a strong northerly flow that's bringing the dry air further southward. And I do believe that this it'll affect this storm system and um, to the point where it's going to have a difficult time to develop under hostile conditions like this so i do believe the gfs model is being a little bit too aggressive with this initialization or with this forecast of this tropical wave and also the upper level winds should be a little bit too strong for this storm system to handle as well by the time this uh, moves um, very far northward but we do see the pressure drop down to as low as around the 1007 millibar range which could be considered tropical storm status but eventually the dry air just becomes too much for this to handle but what's interesting is that this area of moisture still remains even going into next week tuesday august 8th where we do see a decent amount of moisture and a small low pressure system that still exists with this area of convective activity and moving forward with the forecast we see that in the very long term future the gfs model interestingly does want to redevelop this area of moisture um but this very on um, but this so far in the long term future that you definitely don't want to take it seriously at all just yet um i do believe that even in the short term future sure the gfs model is a little bit too aggressive but it's at least something to be aware of that maybe this could potentially happen if we do see enough convective activity within the next 24 to 48 hours i'll just say it's sort of a reach forecast when um um by thinking that this will develop in the very near future i'm talking maybe between the next four to five days i'm thinking that it'll have a better chance in um potentially in the more long-term future where conditions could become favorable as this storm system approaches the caribbean now let's take a look at the european models forecast the European model, of course, is taking a very different scenario. We do see that the European model is at least agreeing that there's going to be an influx of moisture moving into the main development region, very similar to what the GFS model is forecasting. However, of course, the big difference is that the European model does not want to develop this into a tropical storm as early as the GFS model. We do still see a formidable low pressure system, at least within the near future, going into this weekend. But we do see the moisture sort of fizzles out. But we see on the um, just behind this tropical wave, just to the east of this tropical wave, we do we do see an influx of convective activity. Now, this in the long term future could definitely be 
more interesting to watch especially if conditions become favorable as this approaches the caribbean islands let me show you guys the 12z run to show you guys the european models forecast in the more long-term future we do see that there's a decent amount of moisture for this low pressure system to work with to put um to potentially lower the pressure along the surface for enough convective activity to occur for enough lift um, to allow that um, the pressure to lower and the wind speed to increase we do see a decent amount of moisture but there is dry air just to the north of it so it could be limited and plus i do believe that this area of convective activity is a little bit too far south to have a good chance of developing um, area of convective activity needs to be at least somewhat further northward from the equator to um, to receive enough of to receive enough of an effect from the Coriolis effect that typically occurs um that's simply the stronger um the more northward you move from the equator and in this scenario it seems like the tropical wave is a bit too far south to the point where the Coriolis effect may not have enough of an impact to create a well-defined rotation and center of circulation because the rotation would be very weak if this area of convective activity was too close to the equator and that's what we're seeing right here so this area of moisture definitely needs to move a little bit further northward to enhance its possibility that it'll develop while retaining of course the same amount of moisture which could be difficult because there is a, um, plenty of dry air just so north of this storm system there is a strong ridge located right here that's steering a lot of this dry stable air further southward and that's forcing this moisture to move a little bit too far south to have a good chance of developing we're gonna um so for this to have a higher chance of developing we're gonna need to see this ridge weaken which is certainly possible the forecast could change look at the forecast hour i'm going at where i'm around 135 hours out so there's so plenty of time between now and five to six days from now for the european model to shift its forecast to forecast a weaker ridge to exist right over the northern atlantic still a decent amount of time for that to occur um we're just going to need to wait and see if the european model will actually make those changes to see if we're going to see a tropical storm um, approach the Caribbean islands by next week. But we do see regardless of, um, of whether or not this develops into a tropical storm. We could see an enhanced amount of convective activity by the middle of next week. So maybe potentially late next week as well. Over the next week for the Caribbean it should be rather dry. Of course we do have this very strong ridge. Uh, plenty of saharan dust moving through that's bringing a lot of the stable air located over the saharan desert over the caribbean islands so it should be quite dry and quite hot over the caribbean islands over the next several days however that could change as early as next week and into the late portion next week where we do see eventually this tropical wave impact some of the caribbean islands such as the windward islands and lesser antilles so regardless of whether this develops into a tropical storm or not you could see uh you could see an enhanced amount of rainfall so you at least want to be aware of this possibility but we do see as of right now this tropical wave is a bit too far south for this to have a good chance of developing we're gonna definitely need to see this ridge weaken and and also it won't help that the wind shear is currently is currently um expected to be quite strong over the caribbean by the time this is pretty much right at the windward islands doorstep let me show you guys the wind shear map right now so here's what the european model is forecasting when it comes to the wind shear over the main development region and initially the wind shear shouldn't be that strong there will be a decent amount of wind shear just the south of this um area of convective activity just the south of this tropical disturbance and that could hinder it at least initially from being able to organize very quickly because even a small amount of wind shear over a tropical disturbance could definitely prolong the period of how of organization because if the if there's just a little bit of wind shear that small amount of wind shear could be enough to die um to divert a lot of the air molecules um away from the center of circulation and limit the amount of convergence just enough 
to the point where we won't see the the um the wind speed increase surrounding the center of circulation and that's what could and that's that could happen at least initially for the storm system however the good news is, is that as of right now at least the european model is expecting a stronger amount of wind shear by the time this storm is right at the windward islands doorstep we do see an upper level low begins to move further southward along with a stronger jet stream dip that's expected to occur right around wednesday august 9th so if this storm wants to have a higher chance of developing we're gonna definitely need to see the, the jet stream straighten out a bit more than what the european model is currently forecasting because if the jet stream is a bit more straightened out this upper level low would be a little bit too far north to bring that stronger wind shear further southward but as of right now it seems like we're gonna see just enough of a strong northerly flow that's induced by a jet stream dip for this upper level low to move further southward and create more hostile conditions over this trouble disturbance which is certainly good news but still a lot could change between now and six to seven days from now so we're gonna keep a close eye on how the jet stream positions itself over the next several days to determine if this upper level low will bring enough shear over this trouble disturbance or not to prevent it from developing i'll keep you guys updated over the next several days it's still a bit too early to say for certain what's going to happen but i'll still lean to the slightly more likely scenario that this will primarily just be a rain event for the caribbean islands at least um bringing enhanced rainfall and not really a tropical cyclone um threat just yet but that easily could change if we were to see this upper level low um shift its position of course the amount of ridging will be key as well because the stronger this ridge is not only will this it force this tropical disturbance to move further southward and and place it in an area where the conditions will be more hostile thanks to a weaker coriolis effect but also if this ridge is stronger we would see a strong um more stable air move over the main development region inhibiting this storm from developing even more so so we're definitely gonna need a hope for a stronger ridge to build to prevent this tropical disturbance from happening but that easily could change depending on how much this chop weakens this ridge so i'll keep you guys updated over the next several days so this is what the european ensemble members are stating at this time and it, it does um look slightly concerning for the caribbean in the more long-term future because we do have some of the ensemble members eventually wanting to develop this into tropical storm status and what's interesting is that uh, uh quite a few of them wanted to steer this tropical disturbance further northward so it's far from set in stone that this tropical disturbance will take the so um, southern track because we easily could see this tropical disturbance move a little bit further northward and bring more impacts to the bigger caribbean islands such as puerto rico dominican republic and haiti so you so there's at least something to keep in mind over the more long-term future because we do have a wide array of ensemble members taking completely different tracks and completely different strength forecasts so i'll keep you guys updated and here's what the gfs ensemble members are forecasting over the next several days and we do see that a decent amount of ensemble members also want to develop this into tropical storm status but taking very different tracks where they either go very far up north or take a track very far south more towards windward islands and venezuela there's no really an in between like the european model so the gfs model at least in the more long-term future is even more uncertain regarding the track and strength forecast so it is only something to at least keep tabs on around the caribbean over the next several days taking a look at the uh, updated seven day graphical tropical weather outlook we do see that the national hurricane center now has reduced this tropical disturbances chance to a zero percent chance which is definitely much different from what we just saw a couple of days ago where it was expected to be a high a highly likely chance this tropical disturbance will develop as the uh, national hurricane center detected that there just wasn't enough convective activity for this to have much of any chance of developing so they reduce the chance to a zero percent chance now and outside of that the national hurricane center hasn't listed an area over the main development region just yet but that easily could change if we 
continue to see more signs or of potential more favorable conditions over the Caribbean of tropical cyclone development. So make sure to at least um, pay close attention to a seven day graphical tropical weather outlook over the next several days because we could definitely see some changes. So in terms of my overall forecast regarding the chance of a tropical storm this week, so it seems it's um, it seems like it's very uncertain at this time because I'm forecasting in the very long term future. But the fact that we do have some on the of the ensemble members and some other computer models wanting to develop a tropical storm somewhere in the Caribbean by next week, it's at least something to keep tabs on because of course weather changes quickly and if we were to see the wind shear lighten down in the in the um, later forecast runs as well as this storm system um, being able to move a little bit further northward, then the chance would certainly increase for a tropical storm in the Caribbean. So you definitely want to pay very close attention to this as we approach next week. But that's it for now, guys, and I thank you guys for watching.